Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine, the show where we talk about all things gaming. My name is Killjoy, and today, excuse me, we're back with some more music from video games to listen to, talk about. However, all of these tracks in this video are my picks. So the, all up until the, I think the first four parts, were, apart from the occasional track, were picks I had asked other people to send me. And now we're going to listen to some iPicks. I've tried to mix it up from different systems and stuff that maybe you may not have heard or, you know, just some different things. So, let's get on with it. As you can see, the first one is the Game Boy Color version of Turok Rage Wars. I know primarily most people played this on the N64. Uh, but for me, um, I played the Game Boy Color version. And I, straight off the bat, I think this has the best sounding Game Boy soundtrack ever. Like, I think this came out near the end of the Game Boy's... Uh, life and oh my god like if you like chip tune and things like that like this track is just phenomenal anyway let's uh, let's have a listen <laughs> okay so i gotta stop it straight away like so it, it, it's just a really um, interesting piece because you've got the do 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 do, which has got this kind of like echo reverb effect on it. Which I think you use two sound channels to do. I think you play the first note, then the second note slightly afterwards, but quieter, so it kind of gives off that echo effect. You've got a really cool like bassline going. Bear in mind this game is uh, top down. You're like blasting things with weapons, and you've got the you've got a fairly good like beat pushing it along. Um, just knock it back a little bit but yeah it's it just it just hits really nice and it's gonna change in a sec to go into the next part of the track and oh man <laughs> So you get that, do 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 do. So you get this really cool like melody come in, go like pop 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 behind it, and then as it's playing, you suddenly get a har harmonised version of the melody playing as well, and then a real nice feel like bam 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 bam. So if this was if this was played, like I I would love to find a remix of this. It's, I highly doubt one exists, but this is like to me like a very like heavy on the drums. Like that guitar, like screaming out, you know, just, it's hard to, if you've never played, if you don't have much nostalgia for the Game Boy, it's really hard for people to listen to a lot of this stuff and think, oh yeah, that sounds good. But like, the quality of this track is insane. Like, it's so good. Like, it's so good. Like, I love the fact that towards the light, end of a lot of these old consoles you get some of the best soundtracks and this is just this is phenomenal in my eyes like it's, it's so hard to convey that so you then got this 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 do 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 again but like played higher up more of like a floatiness to it like on that synth or whatever it is and they got that noise underneath which is a very staple sound for the Game Boy. Like, there are lots of Game Boy games that use that kind of sound. So, to me, this is like one of the catchiest Game Boy tracks I've ever heard. In fact, the entire Rage Wars soundtrack on Game Boy is outstanding. Um, you're going to hear it's going to loop again, but it hits this really nice note at the end. It's just coming up now. And, and it just ends on that. It's like when you. I mean, this this track's what one minute, probably fifteen, 
uh, in terms of length, right? Now, when you're making old video game music, a lot of the time it doesn't have to be these long loops. It just has to be memorable and catchy and uh, kind of hit all the right sort of steps, let's say, uh, to get it stuck in someone's head or whatever. You're kind of limited by the hardware. Um, and quite frankly, this just does such a fantastic job of making, I mean, I, I imagine out of a Game Boy speaker, it might not sound as good, but listening to through headphones, like, I really appreciate the effort that's gone into this soundtrack and this track specifically. It's called BGM4, by the way. Not very original, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it just, it, for me, it hits all the right notes. It hits all the right notes. You've got something, the drums pushing on, you've got a weird, like, sample that, like, eh, noise that's in there, if you ever listen. <laughs> Uh. It's impressive that that is a sample, but the drums are really like kicking. The melodies like got the sound effects coming in. The bass lines driving the track up. I'm just gonna like kind of like talk over while it's playing now because it deserves to be an entire video. The track is so good. And that, that alone, the way that changed, like, da, 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 like, adds more of a feeling. So the track starts off like, do, 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 ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, do, ba, do, and you've kind of got this track driving along. It's not really necessarily going anywhere, it's just, just, it just works. And then you get that, and then you get the bit where it changes, and it suddenly feels like there's a little more motion, a bit more tension, a little bit more just sort of, oh, it's going in a direction now. It's like kind of like it's almost like talking to you um, with that melody. As far as I'm concerned, I wait for the play out. As far as I'm concerned, if you don't like, if if you enjoy old chip tune music and you don't like this, I'm I'm just very confused because it's just it's just so well put together, and it uses the Game Boy sound chip in a way that just a lot of early Game Boy games. If you listen to Super Mario Land, don't get me wrong, I like that soundtrack, and then you listen to this, you see how much fuller this song is. You see how much more is going on. And quite frankly, this soundtrack just does not get the love and uh, it deserves. But there you go. Like I, I hope if for anyone's sake they just enjoyed this. Uh, it's just a really, really good piece of music for a Game Boy game. So uh, that was uh, Chirok Rage Wars Game Boy Color BGM4. Okay, now on to something from the Mega Drive, specifically Earthworm Jim, New Junk City, probably one of the best first level music ever. Um, I've gone with the Mega Drive version because this or Genesis is, is up there. Um, this is one of the. This is the version I played growing up. If you want a fantastic version, uh, there's also the SNES version, and there is also I believe it's on Game Boy as well. I think this track on there, uh, and I believe it's also got the Sega CD slash PC version, which also has really good music. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's just get into it. <laughs> Love the way it starts, right? Because you don't know what to expect. Honestly, that like the level's weird itself. You know, coming in, then you got right, and then the bass kicks in. I think it's the bass. Okay. Okay, so there's, there's d two different melodies going on right now. We got ba 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 ba
and then the bass is also playing going right so let's run it back so you guys can listen out for the bass and the if you can hear the underneath the meowy kind of synth Drums come in like, like 80 snare sample. Now, again, there are two melodies going on here. Um, there is the underneath the so, like, if you listen. You can hear, try and try and hear the 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 split of the both of the tracks. You can hear the ba ba da ba ba. Easy enough. I like how it breaks it down there, you get that kind of noise, and then back in with a melody straight away. It's just the track, the track never stops. Once the track gets going, it never stops. Things are constantly dropping in and out and in and out to keep your attention. And I think that's what makes this track so interesting. Is you've got so many different melodies, you've got the Boom da ba ba da boom ba 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 ba. Or it's less of a melody and more of a riff. But you then got the ba da ba da da ba 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 da ba da ba da da ba 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 da ba da da ba 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 da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 da. And then on top of that, you've got the the other parts that keep coming in and out. And and I think that's really interesting. It's a really interesting way of writing it. And then it changes. But before we go into that change, you then got that. Like it's. I've always said this about the Mega Drive sound chip, and I, I love the SNES one just as much. But like, there are certain sounds and certain tracks that just sound uh, hard hitting on the Mega Drive sound chip, and this has a slapness to it that you, the SNES version doesn't have. SNES version is a lot darker sounding, right? But this has that kind of funkiness that's constantly there. Like the track's like a clearly a rock track, but there's almost like this underlying because the bass was doing that like uh, that particular melody. But then you've also got the um, the other instrument that's I think the synth that's doing the no, it's the bass. Sorry, the it's like a weird like syncopated funkiness to the bass line that kind of pushes it along, and then we get a change here. Drums. And it's 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 a cool change because some of the stuff's staying the same. The drums are still just hard hitting. You just got that, and then the like it just. I, it's hard to explain this track because there are so many little changes that happen every so many bars that keeps the piece of music interesting. Whether that's something that changes or something that's dropping out, something staying the same, it's it's really interesting to me. I break down to that. That's the track. I mean, that's a two-minute uh, before it loops. I'll come back in with the the rest of it. Just let it play a minute. Honestly, like New Junk City is just a fantastic piece. The with with platformer games, which is what Earthworm Jim is, 
Like, you really need the first level to stand out, right? When you think of platformers, you think of Mario, you think of Sonic. You know, those are the two main ones. Green Hill and the original theme from Mario Brothers. New Junk City is up there, in my opinion, in terms of, like, opening levels. Because you need something to hit and hit hard, and this hits hard. Um, like I said, there are other versions depending on what system you played it on, and they're all just as good as one another. I love all of them. But honestly, like I love the fact that this track has many different like melodies and riffs going on that keep switching and interchanging. And like if you sit and just listen to it, you can hear things dropping in, dropping out. And then you've got that wonderful snare sound, that ba 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 that just punches through and kind of drives the track along uh, constantly. And then you have that change at the end, the ba da 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 ba which is, is, a, is a nice change, a great way to end off the track after it hits as hard as it does for so long. But yeah, Earthworm Jim, New Junk City, absolute banger of a track. Definitely, definitely listen to this and the rest of the soundtrack from this game. Alright, switching gears to a game that I absolutely loved growing up. I'm a huge Bomberman fan. Um, this is Super Bomberman specifically, and this is on the SNES. As it says down there, lovingly, in the bottom left. Uh, this is the boss theme from that game, from the single player. Uh, I like most of the music, but I think this has a certain epicness to it that I really enjoy. And it, it hits straight away as soon as I hit play. <laughs> I, I love it. The bum 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 bum. It's like almost like a timpani and a fucking huge orchestra playing this would be like la 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 la. It's, like, it's screaming right in your face, and that like da 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 dun dun dun, and then you're like boo da boo da boo da boo like ew ew sound in the background. It gives it a certain epicness that really. It's funny hearing a video game at the time when this came out having that kind of epicness to it. Like right back, just listen to the da 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 da. Dun. Dun dun and then da 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 Okay, so this track's crazy, so let's break it down. So we've now got like a drum beat going bop 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 bop. And then you've got the... So that's one side of it. And then you've got a melody and... Uh, I believe a counter melody, but I could be wrong. So the melody's going... Like that, basically. So that's your melody. And then if we run it back just a bit, you've got the... Uh, in my left ears... <laughs> Alright, so you've got the arpeggio in my left ear, which is the which adds the manicness. So breaking those three aspects down, the drums, the melody, and the arpeggio uh, notes, you've got the melody which is quite slow not slow. It's not full in the sense it's not like tons of notes going like like the arpeggio is it's just like playing the It's leading the track. But on the opposite side of that, you've got the arpeggio that's going absolutely bonkers. Like running up and down these notes. And then the drums just like really, really loud snare hits. And it, it kind of... It sounds weird, but it seems to work. So I'm just going to let it play. <laughs> okay, I was going to let it play, but I just noticed the bass line and what the bass is doing. Okay, so... The bass line is going is is going crazy as well. It's like it's basically playing a rendition of the classic Bomberman theme, which is if you don't if you know Bomberman, you've probably heard the right. So that's the kind of like that's in like all of the classic Bomberman games. You have that melody turns up at some point. <clears throat> the bass line is doing a, a rendition of that in a di slightly different, I think, in a minor key. Uh, along to this track, which I've, I'm I'm just hearing now, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. It's playing Bomberman's theme, but it's a, it's a different rendition of it. It's a lot more, oh shit, like this this isn't like playful anymore. This is serious time. There's 
so much going on in this track. Oh my god, I didn't realize like how crazy it was. So now let's just bring that back. Oops. So the arpeggiators have gone up. So like higher on the left now. This is why I picked this track as well. This is a really good boss thing, but just that last, that last like, I don't know, was it 10 to 20 seconds? Is actually bonkers. So you got the, da, 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 like you got instruments coming in and out, <clears throat> adding layers to the track basically. Um, and it's like almost like a guitar sound comes in at one point. And then the bass line just goes ding, 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 and just stays on those notes and does a run like almost runs down the um, fretboard. Uh, what's really cool is that what's this? This is only what like a 50 second, no, 45, 43 second long piece of music. And from start to finish, you get the the intro is straight away in your face. Like, bam, 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 bam. Right, okay, you're in a boss fight. Cool. And then you have that change to the melody. Which doesn't stay around very long before it then escalates into the da, 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 like the pinnacle epicness of the track. Let's just let's just let it loop. So yeah, intro. Setting up. You're in a boss fight. Here's a boss. Right, get ready. All right, very epic sound. Very fast pace. But the melody is so much, it's, not, it's less complex than the other pieces of music until this point. Alright, the epic part. Right, it's in the track. And like, yeah, it's not a very long loop piece of music, but I mean the boss fights aren't necessarily that long in um, Super Bomberman. But this, this piece of music is so... It hits all the right notes for what you want from a boss theme, right? That in, instantly you're... It's making its presence known. Like, that ba 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 bam Right, okay, something's going on here. Big, loud, bombastic, in your face. You then have the bass and the arpeggiator and the drums going absolute bonkers. Like the bass line playing that but obviously more in the style uh, minor key and things so that's moving really fast the arpeggiated notes are moving really quick with the drums pushing and then that melody just just being a little bit less crazy a little less chaotic um just trying to kind of grab your attention away from the other things like the the, the craziness um and then when it goes into the, the the sort of the end section of the track where everything kind of comes together and there's like instruments coming in and pieces coming in like it's it's yeah it's i've always listened to this bit of music but this is the first time breaking down and listen to the segments and my god like this is there's a lot going on here this is a really cool piece of a piece of uh, video game music and honestly super bomberman soundtrack is a lot of fun uh i, yeah, I just picked this one for something different and i kind of like the fact that it's short and to the point and probably one of the best bits of boss music i've ever heard so yeah there you go that's uh, super bomberman boss music all right staying with the snares we're gonna go to donkey kong country if you don't know it's probably my favorite soundtrack of all time it has some of my favorite pieces of music of all time uh this is the extended version we are not going to listen to this for 30 minutes it just happens to be one of the videos i found uh fear factory only plays twice in the entire game it's such an unfortunate thing because this is one of the best pieces of music from DKC and uh, let's let's get into it all right 10 seconds in and you've got so much atmosphere just slavered on what makes this track stand out is it's quite different to a lot of the rest of the uh, a lot of the music that's in the game, right? So it's going for an industrial feel. That's the whole point of this track. You're in an industry, so you have that 
which is is constant pretty much for the entire track and the drums come in as well at some point and that is the driving factor of the track and then you have that bop and then you have these lovely little bits of you got these strings behind very kind of um gentle in a lot of ways they're not trying to push the track they are adding to the danger that this track is trying to purvey and you'll see that as we get on um yeah just let's just run it back so this is like 10 seconds 10 seconds in and this track already has a ton of atmosphere <laughs> Nice use of the drums. I love that, like those fills running around. Okay, so now we have the drums come in. And it's atmosphere. Most of the track. And then you finally have a, a, a chord change there, right? So the entire track is before it then get changes at that, this point into the track. But I love that kind of what I assume is meant to be a xylophone sound or something like that, like being played again. Not we haven't hit we haven't hit the main melody yet, right? It's just all building towards layering this atmosphere and trying to give a mechanical feeling the whole it's meant to be mechanical sounding is what i read from this track it's meant to give you that mechanical feeling like how some songs have like almost like a train that it sounds like a train's coming but yeah let's, let's keep going and now we have the main melody coming And now you've kind of got a track that's it's all the pieces are there. It's driving forward. You got the dun 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 still going on in the background and doing its thing. You've got that like every piece of music. Uh, sorry, every part in this track is kind of layered to give a very specific feel to push. Like this track never stops. <clears throat> it never stops pushing the player forward. And that sounds weird, but if you because you've always got that. But which is like again, they're meant to be the factory mechanical feel to this track, and then you have this very uh, you have these strings come in that play the main melody, which I quite like to interpret as being not ghostly or haunting, but like kind of tension, like over the top of it. Like it's not in your face; it's not trying to like uh, scream in your face because the rest of the track's already doing that. It's trying to melody. It's trying to fit its way in with the rest of the track, but it's also trying to give some kind of particular, uh, give a feeling across, um, either a break in the tension or add to that tension. And now we get the breakdown. Okay, so why I love that breakdown is because the track's pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, right? You're going forward and forward, and it's trying to give this, like I said, mechanical feel. Every part of it's like constantly moving. So, it's, and then you have this breakdown that, and what works really well here, and why this works is what how I interpret anyway. I should probably say is it's like a break in the action it's like yeah you're in this scary mechanical place and here's this little reprieve quickly before boom back into the action and it just works so it, it's so natural feeling yeah, so it's all, all going along pushing you along every little piece of music uh, piece of uh, instrument and then the reprieve little flutter Nice use of strings. And then that. And then as soon as that's is back in, you're off again. Get a change. Now, 
feel like at this point I'm probably looped. I want to move after this part. Let's see how it ends. But it's just. Hopefully you guys can hear what's going on. Oh yeah, the melody changes. Right? And then it loops there. So what you get at the end there, with me rudely talking over it, is it comes back in with that melody, but then you know that da 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 It's got a few slightly different notes in there that signifies that it's coming to an end. Um, just play that. Uh, there. Bop, bop, bop. It goes back into the... Push, 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 push. Character players moving their way through the level. You know, mechanical feeling. Like, if this was done now, it would have more mechanical sounds to it. Right, so listen to how the melody back comes back in. Like layering on that tension or whatever you want to call it. That's different. And then it goes up. Perfectly. That bit, like that end bit, is subtle enough, but it works really well. Where there's changes to the, what the melody was originally playing to what it's playing now, and then dropping everything out to loop it back into the just that. So good. Like that 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 particular instrument or instruments that's playing there, like just keeps the track moving along. At a lovely pace. Uh, all in all, I just think this works so well as a atmospheric track and something that's very catchy, as well as it might, it, for me personally, giving off a very specific vibe. Like you're in this dangerous place, everything's kind of like coming at you. It's got a very mechanical vibe to it, and then you have that little reprieve in the middle. Boom! Back into the track, plays a bit more, then obviously loops eventually. I think it's awesome. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this as well, because I think, I mean, DKC has my, it's probably the best soundtrack I've ever written, and this just shows why I love it as much as I do, this, it's a shame it only plays twice in the entire game, but it is a fantastic piece of music, and you should listen to it. So that was Fear Factory from Donkey Kong Country. Alright, we're going to end on something very weird. Um, we're going to listen to a <laughs> the in-game theme from Worms Pinball. I actually think the Worms games has some some really, really good music. It is criminally underrated. A lot of people don't think of Worms and think, oh yeah, that soundtrack. Um, you probably know like, the original main theme and the different variants of that. However, Worms Pinball, a game you may not have heard of, but it is a Worms Pinball game. You get to, It's a pinball machine, as you'd expect, and it has Worms-related games on it. And uh, yeah, this is... Well, you'll see. Watch this! so good right so what makes this such an interesting theme for a pinball uh pinball game is you the drums are played as a, like in a marching band so that beat and then you've got the horn trumpets whatever you want to call them uh are, are the main lead of the entire track playing that and yeah it's a very different feel because it is going for a march it definitely sounds like it's like it's like what a march would sound like if you added a rock track behind it basically if you strip it back to just the trumpets and the drums you're gonna have a more authentic sound but um the track's got a very very i think the uh, kick drums on the beat that boop right and then everything's layered on top of it and yeah, it just it's it, there aren't there's, there's not many examples of games I can think of off the top of my head that have this style of march to them. I'm sure there are other examples, but this just is yeah, this is the one that I know the best. I forgot to mention there are two sets of strings as well. There's the ones playing and then there's the staccato ones. The staccato ones basically meaning they go eh, 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 very short, sharp notes. So you get the and then you get duh, 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 playing in there as well. Um, so they kind of interchange. There's a lot of little 
instruments going through this track i've just realized um i probably won't pick up on all of them but apart from like the trumpets and some of the strings and the uh, the drums there are some smaller instruments playing like little parts to keep that keep coming in and out basically <laughs> have a nice change there with a bubble bum bum bubble the drums never really stop so the drums are constantly marching away but the um the main melody uh, the main trumpet sort of drop out now and you get more of the strings i think that's what that is <laughs> what i talk about the low noise is probably meant to be a trombone or something um but uh, you, it's it's a weird piece of music there's so it's like in, in my head there's just a lot going on for this but it's also like where is it going? <laughs> What's the direction of this? It's just a lot of instruments dropping in and out, and um, you do get a kind of a breakdown, and you'll know when it when the breakdown hits. <laughs> Like that, for example, you had a another trumpet come in, play uh, the new part of the melody, and it's actually just fucked off. <laughs> Didn't stick around. It's weird how the track is primarily sticking to that trump, the main trumpet part that's playing with the uh, drums driving force behind it, and then everything else seems to come and go as it pleases. It's very bizarre listening to this. <laughs> your breakdown so I really like this bit because you uh, essentially strip it down to the drums with the trumpets but you're also getting you can actually kind of hear the harmonies that are going on here and obviously the whole thing's in midi uh, I think um, <clears throat> but you've got the the main trumpet and then you get like harmony parts come in there's so much there's so much subtlety in it which is what makes me uh, kind of like be like oh wow this is actually way more complex than this track sounds so you yeah, that ba ba da ba 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 da ba Blah, blah, blah. and then during that you have a harmony come in and almost like another trumpet kind of playing alongside it it's kind of weird let me just knock it back a little bit and let's go back to there i love the use of the women's voices fanfare is the word i was looking for it's very fanfare like fanfare being like it's like ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. like you know it's something you play when you're trying to introduce something and this has that um it's very obviously um <laughs> a fanfare sounding track and you have the subtlety of the original trumpets essentially just slot back in there's no break there which is weird so you've got this new melody being played by these trumpets and then suddenly the bra 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 comes back in which i never really noticed before that's actually kind of interesting that it's just there's no build up to that it comes in now very chaotic at the end of what like that. Uh, 
and then it loops you know it loops it loops after that but it's it was a different choice of track because it's not common that you hear i mean obviously there are games about war all the time but there's not stuff like this which is very it's it's weird because worms is a very silly game but a lot of the music has a very serious tone to it um but and also, this is a spin-off of that main franchise that I don't know if many people have ever played or heard of. But, like, for me, it's it's a really cool piece of music to have play while whacking a pinball around. It's very unexpected, and I think that's what kind of gives it a lot of its charm and also a use of the very... It's a, it's a very simple track, but also complicated at the same time. The marching theme, the, the fanfare sort of of these trumpets doesn't really change... But you get a lot of like little things coming in and out. You have like the staccato parts of the strings, the normal strings. You have that bit at the end where the trumpets are playing different parts, and then it just slots back into what it was doing in the first place. And it, it's just, I don't know, it's just a really catchy piece of music. And honestly, if if one person watches this and ends up enjoying this, uh, or goes away and listens to it without me talking over it, uh, I'd be happy because I think this this deserves some more love. I think most of the worm series does um but yeah like honestly there's a really different cool piece of music that has a very marching band feel fanfare feel to it and i really kind of appreciate that because again it was very unexpected when i played it <laughs> um but yeah there you go there are some of my picks hopefully it's a bit different i didn't want to just pick like i know donkey kong's in there but i didn't want to just pick the usual suspects and stuff that people talk about we got a Game Boy game in there, we got Mega Drive, a couple of SNES games, Super Bomber Man as well, and then Worms Pinball, which is, yeah, a game I don't know how many people have played. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, if you like the video, hit like. If you want to see more content like this, and hit subscribe. Uh, links for Facebook and Twitter, as well as the names of all the composers for the music I've used, if you want to check out more of their stuff and find out who they are. And until next video, I will see you then. Uh -huh.